What's going on YouTube? This is Necro Steve, and it's finally time for week 5 of the LBA. Here, the Eternity City Enders will be taking on the Seattle Sandshrews. I am very aware that I am uh, behind in my uploads, especially for the LBA in generally. I just have had a lot of stuff going on. Um, but fortunately, Connor was very easy to uh, work with, very flexible, and making sure we got a time set up to battle. So, thank you for that, sir. And his team record going into this was undefeated. And of course, I'm just coming off of a loss from the Chaos High Dragon, so I really wanted to, number one, make this his first loss, and also bounce back kind of strong from that previous loss. Uh, of course, Hacks did play a f kind of a, a huge impact in the previous battle, and so I also wanted to make sure I could rely on that. Now in the team preview, I noticed that he did bring Gyarados. I didn't expect him to bring that. But what was nice to see was that Tyrantrum could basically 2 KO everything that he had. And I don't think he was expecting me to have Scarf on Tyrantrum either. Now here in the beginning, I didn't think he would go straight for knockoff. And even if he did, I could live it because of the defensive investment I put on my Mesprit. And I was trying to decide, do I want to go for Thunderbolt, expecting Skarmory? Or do I want to go for Psychic, expecting the Jolteon? And I actually got that 50-50 wrong. If I had gotten it correct, I would have been able to put a lot more pressure onto the Skarmory at the beginning of the battle. Now here is where the mind games begin, because I just want to go ahead and go for Magico here. I have Stealth Rock on Mesprit, but I want to put Skarmory in a position where it doesn't feel comfortable setting up Entry Hazards. Um, entry Hazards don't really help a ton against my team, but at the same time, I didn't want them up. I don't need any residual damage if I can avoid it. Uh, we see there that his moves are Drill Peck, Stealth Rock, and uh, of course he likely has Roost. The Thunderbolt does a really good amount of damage. Here I expect him once again to switch out uh, into the Jolteon and I go for Psychic again. He just goes for Defog. So if I had gone for Thunderbolt right there, that would have been perfect. But once again, I'm keeping the pressure on him just by the fact that I can bounce his entry hazards back and I can hit him with Thunderbolts. It's basically an anti Skarmory set. Uh, but since I know his full moveset, I know he basically can't touch Tyrantrum. He also can't do that much damage to Togekiss. Uh, just several of my Pokemon he can't really do anything against since he doesn't have uh, Iron Head for his stab type move. Probably just bringing in Drill Peck to hit Venusaur, of course. Um, so right here, I thought he'd set up his entry hazards again, so I went for Magikarp. Fortunately, I don't hit Jolteon on the way on, although since Jolteon is uh, at full health, it wouldn't really matter. And with my special defensive investment, I'm able to live the hit from Jolteon and get up my Stealth Rocks. I thought that putting on Stealth Rocks would be more useful, put a little bit of pressure on his Charizard instead of getting off damage with Psychic. Um, right here, I figured he would just go for Volt Switch, and unfortunately, I'm forced to let my Mesper go down. If I hit Jolteon with Psychic on the way in, in conjunction with Life Orb, I would have been able to put a lot of pressure on him to get rid of the Entry Hatters because he would have been worn down so much more quickly. Now here, since he went on into Mian Shao, I know even if he has Stone Edge on Mian Shao, it's not a one-hit KO, whereas I can one-hit KO him with uh, Air Slash or Dazzling Gleam. Uh, so I'm just going to go for Nasty Plot, expecting Skarmory to come back in. And at this point, I just figured he set up his entry hazards because I know his moveset. He might defog to get rid of my entry hazards, but what's the, that's literally the worst he could do is get rid of mine and set his back up. Uh, I do flinch. I'm, I'm basically going to flinch Skarmory to death. Um, I don't know that it necessarily mattered because, like I said, he could have gotten rid of the entry hazards and then set them back up. He has Roost on Charizard Y, so even Charizard isn't too bothered by the entry hazards. So I would have gladly taken him not getting flinched there in exchange for some of the other shenanigans that happened in the end of this battle. Uh, I probably could have stayed in there on the Jolteon, but my only attacking move is, of course, Air Slash. And even at plus two, it wouldn't be enough. And I, I could have lived the Thunderbolt just with my special defense investment. But I didn't feel the need to take that excess damage, so I decided to go out on Venusaur. Unfortunately, I get paralyzed, which, since this is troop, it is running a lot less speed with the speed reducing nature, even. But that's so much unnecessary damage. It's just completely unnecessary. Um, I hit Snorlax on the way in. Uh, I'm kind of free to go for Sludge Bombs now, just because he no longer has a Steel type. And Snorlax reveals Curse, so now I'm expecting it to be the mono attacking. Uh, curse set with rest and sleep talk and body slam which sucks because I did not bring Rotom um, I just 
I, I really thought about bringing Rotom, but I ended up not bringing it just because he had more switch-ins for Rotom than he had switch-ins for Tyrantrum. Um, even at plus one, that Body Slam doesn't do that much damage, but I really don't want to get paralyzed here. And I also really want to force Snorlax into using Rest again so that I can switch out. So I'm crossing my fingers that I don't get paralyzed. I'm able to put him in a range where he's probably going to rest up. And now I get to go back on into Togekiss. Uh, Togekiss is bulky enough that I can take two Body Slams and then roost off the damage. But I really need to get off some, a Nasty Plot or two and hope for that he'll get the Sleep Talk on Rest so that I can hit him with really, really powerful Air Slashes. Um, unfortunately, he does get off one Body Slam in the Sleep Talk, which sucks because that that's another chance for Paralysis. Uh, I'm just going to go for Air Slash here, hoping for the flinch, and I see how much damage that the one uh, Air Slash does with plus two, and I do get the flinch, but seeing that damage, let's just go for another Nasty Plot. I have no reason not to. I'm going to live the Body Slam when he wakes up. I'm just basically hoping for to, to avoid the paralysis, and I don't get paralyzed, which is great. Um, here, I'm just going to Roost, expecting him to either Curse or Body Slam again. He really needs to get up another Curse or two in order to take out my Togekiss, because I can play this game all day and, until he gets a Paralysis, basically. Um, and I'm just going to go for another Air Slash now at plus four, and I almost KO him. If I had done it a turn earlier, I would have KO'd him, because he wouldn't have had that turn of Leftovers Recovery. I do flinch him, um, but since we saw how much damage that the Body Slams were doing, unless he was going to go for Body Slam and either paralyze me or get a crit. I don't know that that mattered either because I could have just done the Roost game all day with the Snorlax. Uh, Jolteon comes back in, again forcing me out into Venusaur. I know he's just gonna Volt Switch, but I don't have anything to stop it really, unfortunately. Uh, the one redeeming thing about all the Volt Switching is that it's causing him to take Life Orb damage. Now right here as he goes on into Charizard and takes 50%, I know that I can live any hit that his Charizard wants to go to if I can get to full health. And I think that he's going to want to roost, because if he tries any shenanigans, he'll be at too low of HP to come to switch out and come back in. So as he goes for roost, I go for synthesis. And this works out nicely because I get Venusaur back up to full HP. And now I can see what moves he has or coverage, and that gives me I get the invaluable information that he actually has uh, substitute. So sub roost, Charizard Y. I'm able to break it very easily with a sludge bomb, of course. And right here we just see Venusaur easily take the Fire Blast. I think the only way that Charizard can one hit KO my Venusaur is to be modest and have overheat in the sun. And then it has a chance of one hit KOing. Um, here I knew he was going to Roost again. And so I'm gonna go out into Tyrantrum and reveal my Scarf to him in the form of KOing his Charizard. So I was very, very happy with the way that series of plays went. Unfortunately, that allows his Shot to switch in for free and I thought he might high jump kick um, and so I just went out into Windy Whip I, I figured maybe he'll U-turn but I really thought he'd high jump kick trying to catch me and at this point of course we know that his Mian Shao is like the Scarf Reckless uh, he hasn't had any recovery from any type of um, uh, regenerator ability of course and he hasn't lost any recoil damage to a life orb so he's going to be hitting quite a bit harder with Scarf Jump Kick he probably also has Bounce to hit Venusaur with so it's a matter of just making sure I, I switch around appropriately with that. Um, here my opponent goes for Dragon Dance. I was really, really, I was about 100% sure that he was going to substitute in my face, so I went for Air Slash, and that sucks. So on this turn, okay, I'm thinking, all right, so since he just went for a Dragon Dance, I can live any one hit. Let's go ahead and paralyze him. I know he has leftovers, so he can't, um, of course, have a Lumberry. But I got flinched from the waterfall. Of course, I guess that's justified that Togekiss gets flinched, but that flinch was huge as I would have just paralyzed the Gyarados, whereas me flinching the Skarmory or the Snorlax, in my opinion, weren't that big of a deal. I think that those exchanges would have come out about the same way. Um, and then, to make matters worse, I missed the head smash with my Tyrantrum, which that means it's time to get swept by a Gyarados. Uh, so I had two checks to this thing in case he brought it, and unfortunately, Venusaur is just not at enough HP to do anything about it. Um, I actually ended up misclicking and going for a Sludge Bomb because I was kind of irritated at the time. But uh, it didn't really matter. Even if I had synth used Synthesis, then I would have had to deal with the Paralysis chance. Um, Venusaur being paralyzed against Gyarados, not a good look when I need to keep my HP high. 
And of course, with the plus one from Dragon Dance, now he is faster than my Sinchino. So Sinchino is going to go down too. Just not, not a good end to this battle at all. I and of course, Sinchino and Weavile didn't even get a chance to do anything because they were just there, kind of as cleanup Pokemon. Uh, and I didn't put a Focus Sash on either of them either. So they all just get swept by Gyarados, and that's going to be the end of that battle. Uh, I believe that I brought the right Pokemon to that battle. I also believe that I played it pretty well. It's just we both had a lot of hacks, and at the end of the day, he got the better end of the hack. So that's going to be the end for the Week 5 battle, and that's the Eternity City Ender's second loss. So stay tuned for next week when I go for my first cross-divisional match. Um, when, by the time I upload this, it'll probably be instead of next week, I'll be uploading it quote unquote this week just to try to catch up on my uploads. So keep an eye on my channel, keep an eye on that sub box. I'll be dropping some things in to try to catch up and get you guys up to speed. But I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Bye bye now.